Hello and welcome to another tutorial. Uh, today we're going to draw a fabulous Ford Anglia. Um, Ford Anglia um, was a very well-known popular car during the 60s and then it got a whole new lease of life when JK Rowling decided she was going to um, have a Ford Anglia be the flying car in Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. J.K. Rowling's about the same age I am, and I bet she grew up seeing a lot of them on the streets being used as family cars, as I did. So, first stage, drawing. Have you got your pencil and your A4 pad ready? If not, pause the film and start again when you are. Now, if you've done one of my tutorials before, you'll know that I nearly always begin with the nearest headlight uh, in the center of the page. Now you can see this one's just slightly to the right. Start with the oval of the headlight. So I say it is an oval, it should not be a full circle, a proper circle, and it needs to be slightly taller than it's wide. Now this time, because we're going to have the car facing slightly towards the left, I'd like you to draw a semicircle for the surround of the chrome surround of the headlight just like I've done there. So the next stage we're going to put the remarkable radiator grill. I often talk about the face of a car and I like to draw the face of a car when I start and the Anglia has quite a frog face really with this wide mouth of the radiator grill. So can you see it slanting downwards to the right from just underneath the left hand edge of the headlight, past the right hand edge of the headlight, and then curving slightly downwards. It always does that. I always put it in the same place in the scan of the piece of paper, and yet sometimes it just seems to scan differently. I don't really know enough about it to know why it does that. So look down at the bumper. Um, the, sorry, the radiator that you started making last time. Extend that curve towards the left, which is the top line, the top edge of the radiator. And then from the far right bottom uh, end of the line, I want you to do another line just tapering very, very gently away from the top line of the radiator there to about the same place on the left. Go and try and judge the distance. So it's about the distance that I've made because that's halfway along the radiator grill when it's going to start curving down again. Now, try and judge. Look at where your radiator line ends. Look at the distance from there to the headlight. And then imagine, use your mind's eye to draw out the distance, uh, the same amount of distance to the left from the end of the line. And that's where you're going to draw the second headlight. Because you're working in pencil, you could even draw the line in if it helps and you can rub it out afterwards if it's not right. Now this needs to be a slightly shorter, not quite as tall oval, but quite a bit thinner than the first headlight because it's that much further away. Now you need the semicircle to make the chrome surround as well. And can you see I've extended that semicircle underneath the left hand headlight because that's where the radiator grill is going to start to come to an end. So join up the top edge of the radiator there. You see where I've started curving it down. I actually pushed it a little further past the headlight. It turns out, looking at the finished one, I've exaggerated that quite a bit. It really shouldn't go quite that far, the radiator grill, but it doesn't really matter, as you'll see when we look at the finished one. Now, the curve downwards at the end, the left hand end of the radiator, don't make that quite as um, long as the one on the right. And now we're going to join the radiator up. You can see it's noticeably curving up from the uh, middle, the, um, or not, not so much curving, but going um, slanting up more than the angle of the other side of the radiator. And that's made the mouth, the frog mouth, which is going to be the radiator. Now I want you to make 
on the left hand um, bottom edge of the radiator I want you to draw like a capital C and then I want you to turn it round and draw a back to front C on the right hand bottom edge that's going to be where the bumper's going to go now I want you to gauge and from about halfway along the radiator I want you to do this line which is where the number plate or the license plate is going to sit this should be parallel to the top edge of the sorry the bottom edge of the radiator which is the top edge of the bumper and extending a, not quite a quarter of the way along the length on both sides of the center and now we're going to join the C's up to that little cutout for the number plate and we're just going to taper away very gently from the top edge of the bumper the bottom edge of the radiator and that's made the front bumper and also the recess for the number plate I didn't mention last time as well but can you see I've also drawn a little line from the top left hand edge of the radiator up to a point on the bottom of the headlight there that's the edge of the bonnet or hood now we made the bumper on the last stage now what I'd like you to do draw in the number plate the license plate where I've drawn it so the top edge is parallel to the recess but slightly underneath it now if you look at the thickness of the bumper where uh, the recess is cut out you want about as much of that again to the bottom of the license plate a little curved line to join those up and then you can join from the bottom left hand corner of the license plate you can join that up to the bumper just like I've done tapering curving very very gently towards the edge of the bumper and before you get there a diagonal line up to the left to join it up and the same thing on the right except this diagonal line is going to go past the edge of the bumper because we're going to extend that into the wheel arch now we've done some detailing inside the radiator can you see underneath the headlights I've made those two slanting lines uh, the one on the left slanting downwards to the right the one on the right slanting downwards to the left and this creates um, the indicator light panels um, which are joined to the radiator grill now above the center of the radiator grill can you see I've made that almost like a little flattened chevron or arrow shape that's the badge which says the name Anglia and finally from just slightly to the right of the chrome surround of the left headlight can you draw a curving line which pretty much uh, is parallel to the top line of the radiator almost as far as the right hand headlight because that's the edge of um, where the the bonnet comes open to get at the engine okay so two things to do here we're going to do the left hand edge of the bonnet or hood and we're going to do the big wheel arch on the right it's on the left hand edge of the bonnet or hood if you start off by the bit of the radiator directly beneath the center of the left hand headlight and you want it in sort of a diagonal very very long excuse me s shape so curving in a concave curve gently up to where you made the um, bonnet opening line last time and now curve it round to the right from there to a point where it's noticeably a little bit above the level of the headlights okay so now if you go back to that line on the bottom edge of the underside of the car on the right which curves diagonally which slants diagonally up just past the radiator now from there I want you to make an upside down capital U shape curving back round 
towards the left at the bottom, just as it is on the screen. You might want to have two or three goes at this until you're you're happy you've got it just as it is, because you really don't want it any wider than that. And you want to make sure you've got the curve coming background just as I have. OK, well done. If you've got this far, we're really starting to look like the um, the face of the Anglia now. Now, if you could make a little dot and it should be a point which is slightly to the right of the chrome surround of the headlight and slightly above the chrome surround of the headlight. And that's where we're going to start drawing the mirror. If you draw the little stalk shape there and then the mirror it's kind of like a rectangle, but the right hand edge of it slants quite noticeably over to the right to make this kind of misshapen rectangle shape. And then we're going to have that curving shape coming off the top of the mirror. And if you can make those two curving lines which curve gently over towards the left and then join them up with the diagonal straight line, the short diagonal straight line. And that just is going to help us when we make the edge of the bonnet beneath the windscreen or windshield. And that's the line I'm talking about. So you come slightly up along the left hand edge of that shape we did last time. And then I want you to draw a line which curves very, very gently and slightly down to the left at the end and join up with the left hand edge of the bonnet you made a couple of slides ago. Excellent. We do. You're doing so well. Now, I want you to go from the top of the chrome surround of the left hand headlight and draw a gently curving line to meet up with the top of the bonnet um, almost directly above the left hand edge of the badge, if that helps. OK, and that's where those two should join. Then do that little shape above the um, bonnet line. It's almost like a little Toblerone uh, lengthened prism or triangle. Um, OK, a Toblerone, I think, is the best thing it most looks like. That probably says more about me than anything else. OK. <laughs> We're already putting in the windscreen. We've gone so quickly and done so well, guys. The best one to start with is the um, the windscreen pillar on the left. Sorry, on the right. Now that goes from you can see just in from the top right hand corner of the little mirror. And this line can go pretty much straight upwards. If you look at the distance from the bottom of the mirror to the top of the wheel arch, that's about the exact same distance how far up you want this line to go. Now inside the line you want to draw another line only slightly inside it to the left which is mostly parallel but curves to the left at the top and at the bottom. Now that's going to make the edge of the windscreen. Now look across to the Toblerone shape we did last time. Come in a little bit from the top left hand edge and now you're going to draw the other um, windscreen uh, pillar. Now this one slants noticeably towards the right and it should be end up slightly higher than the one on the right. Not a lot higher, just a tiny bit. And then draw another line slightly inside it to the right, uh, pretty much exactly parallel and we've got everything we need to finish the windscreen. So let's do that. So from the two lines, join up the two lines which are inside the outside posts. OK, you want a slightly convex curve coming round from the left and slightly down to the right with rounded corners and then do another line exactly the same in slightly inside it and that's going to make the seal the rubber seal around the windscreen we're going to do a little bit of work on the front wheel as well i don't tend to on the drawing stage put the whole of the front wheel in just enough to give me a guide for when i come to paint it so can you see there's a pointed oval which is going to make the hubcap of the tire 
the bottom it's quite pointed but it does intersect with the right hand bottom side of the wheel arch there so take a bit of time to sketch out that oval first okay when you're happy with that then you want a curving line which is parallel to the left hand the right hand side sorry which is parallel to the right hand side of the hubcap but it should flatten out before it gets to the bottom of the hubcap and then just draw a line rising slightly towards the left and that just gives us an idea of where the flat end of the tire is going to be really looks like an anglia already guys so we put in the other front wheel now now what you want to do is you want a fairly even semicircle now the semicircle should go from the underside of the car just in from where the indicator lights start and then it should head up to just inside the number plate but then slant straight to slant to the right with a straight line to connect just before the middle of the underside of the number plate just like I've done there um, if you put a full semicircle in uh, does actually it really doesn't matter because that's something you can take care of in the painting stage if you're working in pencil you can work it till it looks right anyway so now we work on the side of the car um, as with the Volkswagen and the 2CV now we've got the face of the car there the rest of it happens fairly quickly so can you take a line from the bottom left as uh, bottom right of the wheel arch and gently curve it slanting up to the right and this should go for a slightly further longer distance than the distance from the bottom of the wheel arch to the bottom of the bumper push it just a tiny bit further than that and then draw two lines just inside the right hand side of the wheel arch and just above the line you've just drawn for the bottom edge of the car there we are now if you go to the mirror now I want you to draw a curving line from the mirror all the way down to the bottom corner of the wheel arch but the line you made last time just inside it where it touches the running strip at the bottom of the car and you've done one side of the door now go back up to the mirror and where you started that line you've just made this time I want you to slant, curve it very gently down towards the right until it's pretty much above the um, bottom line of the car the the running strip of the side of the car you made now again the curve should be down to, to meet it should be fairly more pronounced at the top and much more towards the right and then gently towards the left to meet up at the bottom at the running strip there okay again take a couple of goes with it if you need and uh, when you're happy start the film again and we'll move on there you are so we've drawn in the front side window now can you see where it starts pretty much on the um, post line we made um, a few slides ago just kind of darken that you should run the line almost almost on it slightly to the right and then where the windscreen curves away to the left that's where this window should curve away to the right and you should keep that curve going downwards to um, a point where it's just where it's above and to the left of where the door actually starts because you're going to slant a line down to meet it down to the right again you you should be really really using your eyes at all points but this point especially to try and gauge those distances right if you do it and it looks right great if not 
why does it look right? Is it slanting too far down? Is it going too far across? Decide what's wrong and change it. You're working in pencil so it's easy to do and you can rub out any marks you don't want afterwards. Now, possibly the most iconic thing about the Ford Anglia, you've got that frog face that it has at the front, but then you've got the rear where it kind of curves backwards, which is very unusual. Um, there was a Vauxhall model which had something similar. It might have been the Firenze, but I'm not sure. Uh, and also the slightly earlier Ford Consul Capri before the more famous Capri. That had a similar thing too, but the Anglia is the best known of all of them with this feature. So continue that curved line at the top of the window and even make the curve a tiny bit more pronounced. But don't go as far as the front window does. Make it quite a bit shorter. Rub some out if you need to. Then you can see that strange window shape that you've got, whereby um, you get that rounded corner at the top um, right, I mean, it slants quite drastically away to the left uh, and uh, joins up the bottom there. That's deliberate. That is actually how it should look. So it's important you take a bit of time to try and get that as right as you can. Once you've done that, there's nothing very difficult left to do on the drawing. Again, it's jumped down. I don't know why it does that. Honestly, I always place the paper in the same position on the scanner when I do these. Oh, well. So you need to look at the line which comes from the middle of the right hand edge of the mirror and extends back, which is where the um, cockpit of the car starts if you like and where the doors end. Now I want you to extend that past the um, rear window post, um, not quite as far as the distance from the rear edge of the rear window post to the centre where it meets the door. Now you do a slightly curving line down to the left then a straight line about the same length, slanted about the same amount to the right, and then slant back towards the left at about the same angle and down. Now what you can do here if you're working in pencil, look at the line on the bottom edge of the door um, past the running strip. With your pencil, just extend that line at the same angle and then you'll be able to find out where the back of the car actually ends. Now on top of that, draw in another upside down U as the wheel arch from just to the slightly to the um, right of the door, up and round to the back of the car and you've got your wheel arch there. You can also do the other line, curving line, just to the left, just inside the wheel arch then make the oval very similar, although smaller, to the oval that you did for the hubcap on the um, front wheel. And just the couple of curves to make it look like the tyre as well. And we've hardly anything left to do to complete the drawing. And that's it. So you draw a curved line now which should go very gently up, reaching its apex slightly before the top uh, right hand corner of the windscreen and then curve it in a more exaggerated curve downwards to meet the rear window post. And that's it guys, you've got your Anglia. Anything you're not happy with, why not pause the film, go back to the right uh, stage and look at it again and see how you can improve it. But don't panic when you get to this stage. Sometimes I get to this stage or earlier and I think, oh, you've made a mistake here. S proportion's not quite right. When I got here with this one, um, I thought that I had the rear window post slanting too much to the left. 
but these things nearly always look a lot better when you've applied paint or colour, which is what we're going to do next. Oh, stupid me. I forgot all about that. Um, what that is, guys, um, you might be wanting to do um, a Harry Potter Ford Anglia, which is great. And you've drawn what you need to do for that. And you just need to paint it blue rather than the blue and white I'm going to paint it. But mine's going to be blue and white because I'm doing a 1960s police car. If you ever saw the TV series uh, Heartbeat, which was very popular in its day, which was set in the 60s, that had a Ford Anglia police car in it. So I just draw like the uh, you can see the, the two shapes. I draw one line slanting slightly diagonally to the right on top of the center of the windscreen above that on top of the roof and another one before I got to the corner of the windscreen, which slight slants slightly more. And then the two lines joining that which make the box. This is where the light is going to be. And there it is. You can see I've done a number of finishing off things there. Um, I put the little domed light on top of the police box. I've drawn in where the windows are going to be on the interior, just using uh, my fine liner. Um, and I haven't fussed too much about how accurate they are, just done it quickly. I decided I was going to write the words police before I painted it. And can you see, I didn't mention this before, there's also that trim um, just underneath the, the word police, which is just really a line which curves up from the underside, sorry, up from above the top of the front wheel arch all the way to the back of the car where you get that shape where it just curves round. Um, and you might want to put that in, might be an idea. Okay, so. Before we go to the next one where I'm going to start painting, you need to get your watercolours and also your brush pens ready. Now, starting with colour, can you see there I've done the um, wheel arch. And what I've done with the wheel arch, uh, and if you've seen my other tutorials, you know I've said this before, when I'm sticking to a particular colour scheme, in this case I have to stick to the blue and white of a 1960s police car, I tend to go a bit crazy on the wheels and the front wheel arch. There I've used a mixture of the light blue, which you can see on the side panel above the wheel arch, grey and a really nice viridian green, which I've kind of allowed to bleed into the blue on the paintwork. Okay. Now, on the underside of the car, I've also used this, um, I put a watery grey there and allowed some yellow to, to just bleed into it, to just give a little bit more tech, visual texture. So here I really started applying the um, blue to it. I started off doing the bonnet with a very, very light blue. And then as that was drying, I applied the same blue, but slightly less watery and more concentrated on the top edge of the bonnet and also just above the radiator. And I'd allowed those to try and start to bleed together to try and get some highlights. Um, I did the same on the wing above the headlight on the left as well. I painted blue, the same watery blue on the underside, underneath the bumper and the um, braid, un underneath the bumper and beside the number plate. And then I went over the top of that, I allowed some viridian green to seep into it and also some grey to make it a bit darker. It's spread over the number plate, but at this stage, certainly don't worry about the whole thing looking a bit messy. So you can see I've added yellow to the interior. I had a whole layer of yellow on the interiors inside and then added grey to the corners of that, just allowing the two to seep and mingle. I also put yellow on the bottom of the white door. Um, I darkened, you can see, the wheel arch 
and also underneath the left hand headlight and apply just a bit of green inside the front window and inside the um, rear window as well. At this stage it looks messy but it always does and I haven't started applying the brush pens yet and I haven't started using the ink fine liner on top of the watercolour either. Have faith. Now with this particular car I found that using the black brush pen on the underside and in some of the shadows really really had an effect now especially around that front tire where the fact that it's so sketchily drawn in is suddenly coming into its own a little bit as well as the black brush pen on directly underneath the uh, bottom edge of the side of the car I also used a little bluey purple or purpley blue and allowed those two to mingle a bit and spread okay also, can you see I used a darker blue brush pen for highlights on the chrome surround of the headlights and also for the shadow of the mirror. Now it was time to use the fine liner to give the um, to color it or shade in the black rubber surround of the windscreen and also the interior windows. And that makes um, a huge difference. I also put a dark line above the chrome trim on the side of the car. Now we're really getting into the nitty gritty of the details. You can see I've used a darker blue brush pen to do the top of to do the light um, and the sign in the box and also to do the word police on the side. I've also started drawing in the detail on the radiator, which you should be able to see. I've done the, the three middle panels, but there was a lot more to do on that, which we'll see by the next time. Uh, can you see the purple as well spread on the just from the rear tire past the wheel arch onto the bodywork? I wasn't too worried about that at all. A little bit of spread of colours, as I say, just adds that bit of visual texture, which can really make your picture pop out from the page. And that's it. This is actually the finished version. You can see that um, I've finished the tyres and also uh, finished the radiator, did the Anglia sign on the front, and decided that I really needed uh, a license plate, a number plate there, which I used the fine liner to shade in, although I did make up the numbers myself. Then as a finishing touch, I took um, a lightly moist brush and only lightly moist and used it to pull the colour away, particularly on the left side from the tyre and underneath the headlight and the bumper, which again just adds a little bit more. We're not making a photograph here guys, we are making a picture and you can see there's other places on the right where I've done that as well. And so the only thing remaining was to write down that it's an Anglia and to sign it. Now what I'm going to do now before I leave you is I'll just show you the stages we went through but a lot more quickly. And that's it. I hope you really enjoyed it and uh, I'll see you soon for another tutorial, I hope. Bye.